It's the holiday season, I got a lot of Blu-rays. Well, the end of another month and the end of another year can only mean one thing. The gigantic, massive Blu-ray haul to cap off another great year of talking movies with you guys. And I am having such a blast at doing so with each and every single one of you. And if you're a new viewer, if you enjoy talking all things cinema, if you enjoy physical media videos just like this, this is the place to be. So do consider becoming a subscriber and hit that notification bell so you don't miss another second of the action going into what looks to be a very exciting year for movies. We've already built such an amazing community over here on this channel, and y'all are invited to the party. But let's get right down to business. We've got a bunch of titles to go through, and let's start off with some nostalgia, shall we? I grew up loving Jim Henson. I grew up loving the Muppets. So it's only fitting that I add three more Muppets specials to my collection. We have the Muppets Take Manhattan, which is a huge nostalgic hit for me. And then we have this two-pack right here with the Great Muppet Caper. A lot of people consider the Great Muppet Caper to be the best one outside of the original Muppet movie. And that's a hard point to argue, my friends. It's a lot of fun. But Muppet Treasure Island just hits different. I don't know what it is about this special that really strikes me. Maybe it's just the bizarre nature of the premise and everything like that. Maybe it's Tim Curry as Long John Silver. Maybe it's the songs that are inside Muppet Treasure Island, but... That one might just be my personal favorite now sitting here as a 26-year-old man. But I love both of these. Absolutely very, very exciting that I get to add both of them to the collection. Next up is a very overlooked movie from Mike Nichols and one that my girlfriend actually requested that I buy closer. I mean, look at this cast of talent right here. You have Julia Roberts, Natalie Portman, Jude Law, and Clive Owen in this thing. Looks like a great cast. I've never seen it before. Sounds like it's a very underrated feature from the late Mike Nichols. And it'll be interesting to check that one out. Next up is actually going to be a big Oscar film for one Jeff Bridges. I, th I believe this won him Best Actor back in the early 2010s. But here you go, Crazy Heart. Plays this broken down country singer. Maggie Gyllenhaal is right there alongside him. I mean, it looks like a really good movie. I haven't seen it yet. Definitely curious to finally check it out. Ooh, here's one I was looking to add to the collection for a while. Finally did it. Public Enemies. Another movie from the man who did Heat and Collateral. Um, this is a really, really underrated mafia-style movie. Johnny Depp gives a great performance. You also have Christian Bale and Marion Cotillard to round out a great trio. If you haven't seen Public Enemies, highly encourage you guys to check this one out. Speaking of mob-style epics, let's add another Martin Scorsese one to the collection with Casino, which a lot of people, including myself, consider to be better than Goodfellas. I know it kind of sounds like a hot take, because Goodfellas is a classic and everything, but I think Casino has the better and more interesting story. And I missed out on the Criterion sale last month at Barnes & Noble, so I had to add more to my collection. There's four Criterion titles that I had to go through. And I talked about Mike Nichols a little bit with Closer being added to the collection, but this one might be his most famous. Here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. I finally added The Graduate on Criterion to my collection. This may be the performance that put Dustin Hoffman out there as a household name, and it gave him so much more credibility and so much more exposure. And a lot of people consider this to be his best work, and he is still a legend. Speaking of legends, let's talk about Denzel Washington, let's talk about Spike Lee, and let's talk about Malcolm X. A great turn from Denzel Washington, one of two excellent turns in recent memory of Malcolm X himself. Denzel is the more well-known turn of Malcolm X, and it's iconic. Denzel Washington proves in this movie why he is a master and a legend. And it's movies like this that keep Spike Lee in the conversation as one of the more innovative directors working right now. Speaking of innovative, this was one of my favorite movies of 2020, the worst year of all of our lives, Sound of Metal. I was so bummed that I could not see this play out on the big screen. This movie just floored me from beginning to end. Riz Ahmed in this movie puts forth his best work ever, and probably the best work he'll ever put out there. Sound of Metal is so, so good. If you've never seen it, 
highly, highly encourage you guys to check it out. And the last criterion I added to the collection for this haul is The Power of the Dog, starring Benedict Cumberbatch, directed by Jane Campion. This was the Academy's favorite movie from last year. This is the one that got the most Oscar nominations last year. It's well warranted. I don't know if I'd put this as my best movie of 2021 by any stretch of the imagination, but it's still very strong. You have so many amazing performances from Benedict Cumberbatch. Kirsten Dunst puts forth probably the best work of her entire career. Cody Smith McPhee is really good. Jesse Plemons plays a very down-to-earth guy and not a villain. The Power of the Dog is excellent. I had to get this on Criterion. Now getting into some of the more new releases getting added to this collection this month. Lyle Lyle Crocodile. I cannot believe I'm sitting here saying that I liked this movie. The music in this movie, top notch. Pasek and Paul really know what they're doing when they're crafting musical scores. And they know what they're doing when they're writing lyrics to that score. Sean Mendez has a great voice and he's a very endearing hero in here. Javier Bardem gives a really, really eccentric, over-the-top performance that you love to see. Don't judge a book by its cover. This is a really charming little movie, guys. I highly, highly encourage you guys to show this to your kids if you have them. All right, next up is The Woman King. A lot of people put this on their best of the year countdown, saying it was this generation's gladiator. I don't know if I can go that far. I wanted the action to be a lot more brutal than it was. Gladiator, you actually see, like, you know, heads getting chopped off and limbs getting sliced and diced. The action in The Woman King is very, very tame compared to Gladiator, but you know what? Still a powerhouse turn from Viola Davis. John Boyega in this movie is very good as well. Uh, Lashana Lynch, oh man, did she steal the show. Really, really enjoyed watching this on the big screen. Definitely, definitely looking forward to watching this again. Speaking of movies I'm curious to watch again, here's Amsterdam. David O. Russell's latest addition to his controversial filmography. He has assembled such a gargantuan cast of all-stars for this. And yeah, Amsterdam is not a movie without its flaws, but I can't deny I dug the crap out of Amsterdam. I sat there in this theater. I was really riveted in the mystery behind Amsterdam and what exactly was going to happen. You have so many excellent performances in here. Christian Bale, again, showing why he's our generation's Daniel Day-Lewis, showing that he can really take anything and turn it into gold. I mean, Chris Rock in here, Anya Taylor-Joy, Rami Malek even gives a pretty good performance in here, Michael Shannon, Mike Myers. I haven't seen Mike Myers in a new movie in years, and he is really fun to watch in his own right. If you haven't given Amsterdam a chance, or if you want to give it a second chance, I highly encourage you guys to do so, because I think you're going to find a lot to like. And last but not least, shout out to Red for contributing this to my collection. Thank you, cousin. Um, this is one of my favorite movies of 2022, The Banshees of Inisherin. Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson give two very much Oscar-worthy performances. Don't be surprised if Brendan Gleeson takes it home for Best Supporting Actor. If Martin McDonough is not nominated for either direction or writing for this project, I'm going to be floored. Because this movie had me floored. All three of his movies before this, In Bruges, Seven Psychopaths, Three Billboards, they've all been great. Very good dark comedies. This one might be his darkest, but it's still so unbelievable how he manages to pull off such an enrapturing narrative. Because the motivation of Brendan Gleeson to steer away from Colin Farrell isn't necessarily the strongest, but just with the way he writes this stuff, you can't help but be fascinated by what's going to happen next. And I can't wait to relive the Banshees of Inna Sharon again and again, Please do not be surprised if this is nominated for a bunch of awards. But there you go, guys. There's the big haul for this month. Feel free to pause the video if you want to see how the spines will look on your shelf with all of these. Guys, it has been such a fun year talking movies with each and every single one of you. And I cannot wait to explore the new stuff we're getting in 2023. If you're a new viewer, one more reminder, hit that subscribe button and smash that thumbs up as well if you enjoyed what you saw. I wish you guys a happy new year. Please celebrate with your loved ones. It is going to be such a fun ride going through this new calendar year. With all that being said, back talk, commence. Yeah.